Hello, boyos! It's me, Grimokin here. Welcome to Goosebumps Horror Town Playthrough. Today, we're going to be taking a look at part two of the Phantom of the Auditorium questline. I know this has been something you've been dying to see, but we're finally going to be taking a look into it. Tonight, we're going to be looking at our first character, and I think our only character. I mean, technically speaking, there's more, but there's scenes, so. Eh, so we're going to be looking more into Zeke Johnson. Now, he's basically roughly the same kind of character based off of this book in the same name, but not really. This one's a little bit more loosey-goosey. You'll see what I mean. In the story, they do mention the school that this book would have actually took place in, but they change it from a middle school or school to just a college, so... That's interesting, but regardless after that, there's not much more to talk about here. So, let's just go and dive right in, huh? So first things first, we buy the Phantom Pack. So now, Zeke is free and we have some goodies with us too. Normally I don't have to do this, by the way, because Zeke is worth 7,000. <laughs> oh, that's still more. Oh, yeah, and then there's the fast forward. This is the, you can buy stuff just to get faster, but don't bother. There's a bunch of things here too that um, I'm gonna mention during my playthroughs of this, mainly about um, how this game kind of progressed. And, well, not really. This update progressed in the sense of the difficulties spike for some players. Not all, but I. it was interesting to see people's reaction of what they believe and what they think of what to say or do here. So, anyways, we're going to put the red carpet right there. Just for now, we're going to have a proper placement at the end of the video series. Hopefully in part four, but for now, I usually just put some space and put them right here. We got the two Phantom of the Auditorium posters based on both works by um, Tim, and I'm, I'm not going to try to... It's not Mark, I know that. It's someone else, but... Uh... God, I'm sorry, man, whoever's there. Uh, something interesting about the table that I'll mention later on, but this is the casting tent. It's a redesign of a certain um, tent we got in the before. And that drama table, uh, there is something interesting with that, which I'll show off when it comes up. But anyways, hey, look, we got Zeke. Look at that guy. Anyways, um, we didn't get a good look at Zeke. We'll find out later on, but first... Fear must go up. Testing. One, two, three. Hello everyone, I'm Zeke Kano 3 and welcome to another video. Zeke Kano 3, huh? Where have I heard that name before? Strange. Oh, well, probably nothing. As you can see, I'm sitting on the bus today and I'm on my way back home after a really long time. You may ask yourself, why? Well, everything started during my basketball practice session at Woods Mills College. Uh, I see what you did there. You added Woods Mills into the storyline, but it's a college, not a school. I gotcha. Animate souping triples and uh, obtain some scripts, six of them. But you gotta love it too when you're just thinking about playing basketball. Well, I'm playing b ball bop. <laughs> now, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. It's like Prince, Prince of Bel Air with Will Smith, my god. That brings some memories, man. We're the couple of guys that grew up in no good. Oh, man. Anyways, I'm getting off track with uh, fond memories of the past. Anyways, we got Zeke here. We got parkour, shoot triples, I'm guessing basketball. Do the Dan Zeke. Okay, that would be interesting to see. And then some other ones. But I think here we'll also be looking into the next quest part, so... We're just going to click on some items here, collect some feathers, and then we should be able to be done once we click on Mr. You-Know-Who, Mortman. So let's do this. Well, well, well. This sounds like a perfect opportunity to set up my revenge against those hateful kids. If only I could keep her distracted. Seeing these photos albums always calms me during troubled times. Oh, Zeke, how much do I miss you? That's it. 
Curly, stop writing those nonsensical stories and give me your computer. Time to brown steam into this thing. It isn't a computer, it's a laptop. And they aren't only stories, they are stories to give the player good- Yeah, whatever. Just give me that, that thing. thing. Now! Slappy's so annoying. He always gets what he wants, you know. Why does Curly sound like a bit? Aw, oh, man, why do you have to do that, Slappy? Come on, man. And send. Now we just wait for him to bait. Him? Are you as blind as you were dead? It's the boy the mayor was talking about. Now, time to start phase two. Yeah, phase two. Which is... End F2! Just go and leave this on promenade, close to the opening stage that those kids are mounting. Place the drama table, which we've done, obtain some ink and feathers. Pens. Okay, cool. Right, let's ignore the vampire stuff and uh, let's go ahead and see uh, some stuff here. Which is interesting too, when you get Zeke in the house, like it's basically Zeke's house. Well, not really, it's the Johnson house, I should say. And the reason why is because this is Mayor Johnson's place as well. So, Zeke comes with the family abode, and it's interesting how they kind of expanded the universe. I'm kind of hoping in the future that they're able to kind of uh, fix um, the other nobodies that I might mention later on in, the, in life, but for now, they are the nobodies, the wannabe somebody, they're dead, but you just don't know who they are. Uh, that was a butchering of a Marilyn Manson song, if I ever did hear one. Right, so hopefully, I wonder, how are you guys doing right now? Uh, apparently school has ended, which is weird because I thought people wouldn't go to school because, you know, the <coughs> thing. Anyways, yeah, so we got something here. Let's have him quickly hide in his house and then zoom in on his animation. Ooh, nice. Man, you're showing some moves there, buddy. Man, you would be cooler if you actually did the slam dunk. Like, uh, but whatever. It's it's something. It's nice that they have a basketball on the not a basketball the net. Oh, and the phantom pack too, by the way. I love the stupid face on the side. Woo! But Dark Rose Kiosk. Oh yeah, and I'm just showing you the Dark Rose Kiosk has changed its items in there so now you get to know what it is there <sighs> we're not going to see any of those two scenes as of yet but we will be seeing one scene here but we'll learn more about that guy's story uh in part three i believe um this this whole thing is kind of a narrative you're trying to expand on stuff but yeah this is what i was talking about before someone pointed this out onto uh the forms but if you notice um, these two tables are copy-paste exactly the same. Like, look at this. Look at it. It's the same stupid table. One of them is a decoration you get during the, uh, Strunken Head bit, and then this one's just drops items, so okay. Lucy, we're gonna have her do her second task animation, kinda. It's using a reusing an animation as before, but she's heading into a needs the red carpet. I actually like this update slightly just because of the items that they've had it made it allows me to be able to fix the uh, auditorium scene that I got going on in the um, my town you know the one where uh, Mr. Wood is placed the one that you need theater masks for in order to get the phantom mask and oh boy I can't wait to talk about the phantom mask because that certainly looks like something if you are familiar with some of uh Japanese anime animations it doesn't make any sense <laughs> <Arr>! okay <coughs> all right so this is the thing in question uh, her taking a picture I I get what they were trying to do here it was like making it look like oh yeah she's taking a picture of people across the street but you know it just doesn't work that way I will say though this next bit though now, this goes out to the person who wanted a Danny Phantom May May, so uh, here you go. Yeah, I didn't know what else to do. So yeah, this is the Phantom. This is how he scares. He just, you know, does the Batman pose. 
T pose. He's assert. Oh, yeah, he's he's doing the T pose. He's asserting his dominance, as you can see. <laughs> what, what, what was that meme? The T pose. Oh, he's a certain dominance. Look, uh, it's a T pose, all right. But he's like doing the Batman thing. And what's even weirder is that when he's doing his back end, it kind of looks like a flasher in the sense that he's like, ah, surprise. You know. If if you really want to go that route, you, we all know better. But still, it's like just like oh surprise, and now he's running away because he's just a flasher. Man, I am inappropriate for children. I well, I mean this is not made for kids anyways. But uh, that doesn't stop people from watching my channel, <coughs> especially trying to figure out what to do because of content and whatnot, but that's the thing about Goosebumps, it attracts people who grew up with it back in the 90s and even newer generations now. But I will say I will give this game credit for giving some interest when it comes to property without really too much disrespect, I feel like anyways, well besides one story, but we already talked about that and uh, we're not gonna go into it more. <clears throat> monster blood. Not monster blood. <laughs> the blob. Yeah, so that's how long it takes for uh, the thing to do its stuff. Here's our first request, by the way. Not Uncle Seder's pack. That can go away. That's not important. What is important is uh, this thing right here, down here. The, uh, the one with the feather. Let's click on it for two days. What is it? It is the sound test strings. Uh, this gives you the cellos, and what's interesting about this too is that there's only two of these this year, this time around, for uh, this event, which is unfortunate because you didn't get to do the other ones, so that kind of sucks, but I will say I do like the idea of the sound testing thing, I get what they're trying to do, it's like, oh yeah, like, like how in normal theaters or orchestras that they would just kind of play around with their musics, you know, that type of beginning orchestra thing that you usually expect but that's just them testing to make sure that the sounds is exactly where it needs to be before the conductor taps his, his little stick and he does the, the the mental thing it's it's bizarre to see them doing that it's it's a talent and i understand slightly what it's supposed to do but at the same time it just makes the guy look like he's just kind of moving his hands up and down and kind of just pointing at certain people. The whole point is that the direct the, the conductor is supposed to be the person who just kind of reminds people, okay, your turn now. Okay, cool down. Here's the tempo. Watch my movements. This is how you're supposed to beat with the one, two, three, four. But yeah, there's a bunch of stuff like that there. Uh, I did will say that I'm kind of happy with this story. I was reading into it and I'm kind of excited to see some of the ideas behind it. Uh, by a by Erasmo, which I will, I, which I gave credit for, and I actually saw him comment. And I love when people were talking. Like, oh, he's here! There he is! It's like I mention him, and he just appears, like magic. Ooh. But uh, yeah, I, I will give the guy credit. the The story this time around is pretty nice. I don't know for full extent how much it's changed since then. And I know when it comes to whatever comes up next, they do have a person that does the story full time now. So it'll be interesting how they kind of come about this because July will be the big, big v reveal. And I'm hoping that it's going to be as fun as me and uh, Erasmo, who's trying to do it as a, as a little bit. Not fully too much, though, but you know. Uh, one thing I will say about this update, though, is that Erasmo, like me, likes to put in some little things here and there that kind of make you build the world a little bit by putting a little Easter eggs and nods into the lore to make it the world bigger than it should be. And uh, sure enough, a familiar character should be popping in or mentioned, and I decide to have him be voiced in. You'll see what I mean in a minute because of how the dialogue's supposed to go, but I feel like uh, this is going to be another case of uh, fun. And I'm looking forward to when this character gets introduced because, oh boy, this the way the story goes about this is just, I feel so bad. <laughs> I, I started this meme in December and now it's coming back again. It's like, it's like, I can't. 
I'm, I'm curious now what will happen at the end of the year. You probably are figuring out what I'm talking about. It is the good old drama teacher, Mr. Piccolo. Yeah, he's gonna get mentioned here a little bit, and I do kind of give a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a voice work here. You'll see what I mean when the next quest line pops in, when this finishes. And I'm kind of proud of myself with this too. Uh, there's some minor jokes here that I was proud of and animated. One of them being with Zeke and the, the bus driver of this uh, this. Uh, the game because he's on the bus driving to poor town and you wouldn't be surprised of who's driving the bus but hey you know horror town is all full of interesting characters a lot of weirdos but yeah I like you know dr uh, brownstein there right then we got sam he has a bit of some animations for well, not really animations there's only two but unfortunately we need um the drama is this a drama table i think it's a drama table it's, it's a table and then we need the piano or the organ it's not really much of an organ but it's one of those church organs this, the small little miniature ones not with the big pipes that you would see the phantom of the opera used but it's it's what it is I am looking forward to seeing um, future content updates just because of what will happen. But yeah, this is the book, by the way. So this is the Phantom of the Autorum. Uh, six quests with Zeke. And um, that's it. So there's no hidden BS of, oh, you need this in order to continue, or this. No, no, you just need Zeke and then you're good. And uh, this is the prize you get, the statue. It looks... Yeah, it looks alright. It's not that bad. I don't think it drops any scares, unfortunately, so it's just a nice decoration. I don't know where to put it, but I have an idea where I might. So, by the time Part 3 comes out, I probably would have probably have it and be like, Oh, I know where it is, but as of right now, I'm still working on a secret uh, side thing that... Um, I'm not going to mention anything that I'm not talking about until Part 4. It's building up a meme, don't worry. I'm, I'm getting to it. By now, though, you probably already know what's going on as far as the, uh, the secrets you've been keeping. But anyways, here's the fun part of the dialogue exchange. Hmm, could this be? Yes, it is. I thought all the scripts had been destroyed in that accident, but here it is. Intact. But how? Oh, well. Who cares? Mr. Piccolo. I'm sorry, but we won't stage your play this season. Once again. Yes, I know we've canceled it two times in a row, but this is important. Maybe we can talk again later this year and... Hello? Mr. Piccolo? Hello? <laughs> Man, I poor Mr. Piccolo. He getting snipped again. Jeez, Christmas is gonna be wild this year. <laughs> Oh, uh, poor Mr. Piccolo, he can't get a break. His Christmas tradition, his 12 screams, is not gonna happen just yet. It, why is it happening now? Well, Christmas in July, why not? Anyways, here's another. Kids, can I have a moment of your attention? Please? Thank you. I know that you were excited to perform in the play cancellation last year due to... <clears throat> a little incident. That kid hasn't returned my money yet. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder who he's referring to. It hasn't happened to be someone I created. No, can't be that. <clears throat> but instead, we're starting a new play that hasn't been staged since 1920. So without further ado, I present to you... The Phantom of the Auditorium. Didn't think I'd be able to work the title in, did you? So that means I memorized those lines for nothing? Oh, now it's Marty that gets pissed, not Dustin. Interesting. Get the casting tent. You need another one, unfortunately. Obtain some scripts and a music sheet. Now, what's interesting about this is the fact... Oh, yeah, and I need this, too, so we'll be finishing that quest off real quick. Um, what's interesting about that, too, with... Uh, not just with Mr. Piccolo, but the, uh, the... The idea. So Slappy had the script for some reason, and he dropped it off. And this script has been hidden for a century, which means a hundred years have passed and this thing survived. How is that physically possible? Who knows, but it, it survived, so okay. 
what happened exactly? Well, I don't know. What I will tell you is that the way they handled the Phantom of the Auditor uh, the Phantom of this Phantom of the Auditorium thing, I really digged it because they give you a lot of red herrings all over the place, and they don't even give you a clear who is it. Like they don't give a hint or nothing. If the Phantom's the Phantom, right? But they kind of, in the story with Zeke, as well as in the in the book and the prize, they kind of give you this whole falsehood, like, oh, maybe it's, um, Emily. Not Emily, it's, um, I can't think of the guy's name, but you know who I'm talking about, his hideout. Or could, maybe it's Zeke, or maybe it's some random guy you don't know, or ha, maybe it is the Phantom, maybe he is a ghost, who knows? <laughs> That's the beauty of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine some poor homeless guy living in the in the the, the auditorium theater uh, play area there, and he just wants his peace and quiet, so he just dons on the smelly costume just to go, oh, ooh, spooky. But um, I'm reason to believe that perhaps that this thing is magic or actually a phantom, because apparently, at some point in the story, he actually has some powers with him. So, I, either he has powers or he has ways of manipulating things to make it look like... I don't know, man. The story is... it's be Okay, the story is a lot better than the last one we dealt with, okay? There's no confusing, no weird grammar. It's it, proper, okay? Proper story, beginning, end. Nice conclusion, nice add-on type of thing. But, oh... Whew. There's some crazy, crazy wackiness that goes on here. Oh, and by the way, uh, new music because the thing froze. Yep. So we got two Goosebumps music theme, unfortunately. I have yet to play the new Goosebumps game that came out, but my god, I'm not gonna pay that much money for that experience. If it was like 19 bucks, more power, I would have streamed it right away with no problems, but man, I can't. But I'm gonna have to look at listening to the, some of the music because maybe I can utilize that into the soundtrack so it's not too boring. I will say that some of the um, I, some of the storylines and stuff like that they put into that game, the Dead of Night. Oh boy, uh, I I will give them credit where credit is due, but uh, that is really short for something that's worth that price. It's mm, no sorry, but anyways, we're now going to go into. The main story here which I believe is for Zeke so with this we should be about done when I received a very strange email from my mom it's pretending to be a his mom it's so creepy Ah, Slappy, what are you doing? To be fair though with Slappy, he was the one who actually wrote this stuff. That was done by another person in particular, but yeah, oh by the way, we can't do his quest yet because he's doing uh, this nice animation, the kickflip on... Man, that, that, what hardcore that, that door is open and he's just doing the backflip on that, so uh, kudos to him. We're gonna see more of that animation later because we're gonna have to do that at some point. But yeah, look at that, he's, he's really living on the edge. But anyways, music's back on and sound effects, so hooray for that. Uh, so this is the music sheet. This is what you need for it. Man, I'm, I am so bad when it comes to some of these, uh, how to do these videos. Thing. I'm sure I'm not like any other person who does these game play videos. Oh, right, I've remembered. Remember when I talked about Casey is, like, just gone? I will tell you right after this, though. And that's why I'm coming back to town. I can't wait to find out what this is all about, can you? I'll be back later with more news. Peace out, everyone. Remember to like, favor, and subscribe. Yo, go there. <laughs> oh, YouTube, I hate you sometimes. <laughs> oh, God, there's a creep. Well, I'm glad to see that at least normal people, I guess they work normally.
but why no disguise? Thanks, dude. Great costume, man. Getting ready for the Fear Free convention? Fear 3? Okay, nice. You know, let's have a Fear Free event. Why not? It'll be fun. I guess it's like E3, but I don't know what the 3 stands for. The f the, w are there free fears? I, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Just get up to bed. Costume. Do I look like a video game character? Like a freak? Freak. I can only imagine that's what happened <laughs> as he's driving away. Paint some music sheets, animate to do the Zeke dance, and then have the mayor do something. Oh, by the way, yes, once you get Zeke into here, the mayor now has tasks. Cooking Zeke's favorite and doing Zeke's laundry, which is interesting. Oh, by the yeah, yeah. So, as I mentioned before, I and others were like, hey, where's Casey Loves Gaming? He would usually play this game, and the last we heard of him was last year when he played my event. And I was like, what, what happened? Well, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, when this event dropped, he released a video, and he basically showed that he was alive. <laughs> His reasoning on why he stopped was because of the recent um, limited time update that's been hitting, and I do agree they should have some sort of like permanent content. Like when I saw the Valentine's Day update, I thought that was the kind of oh they're they're doing two things at once. They're doing permanent as well as like just like what happened last time. So I was like oh yeah, you know what? Yeah, I'm good with that. But no, that doesn't seem like that's what's going on now. But I'm hoping from rumors that I've heard during the part one that that perhaps this will not be a thing moving forward. But uh, we will have to wait and see for now. That's not to be the case. But yeah, it's fun to see that he actually came back alive and he was talking about it and he was just like, oh man, I should have like we missed uh, Monster Blood. We missed the Beast from the East. And it's like, man, I should have like... Uh, all this stuff and at one point he even said like uh, the the thing behind the beneath the sink and I'm like oh no that doesn't exist in that one <laughs> that didn't exist in that update what I do will say though is please the game developers bring the rules back into some updates and then this is his dance by the way he's just gonna go into his house magically and he's gonna come out but we're gonna take a zoom in on this Zeke dance or dance Zeke as it's, as they're calling it oh, there he is look at him Ooh, yeah, look at that movement, and you get a close look up on this guy. Man, what what, what, did, what kind of moves are these? Man, I want to I wanna see somebody. He's like dribbling the ball, and then he's just raising his hands up. Man, some fly moves. He's going to give Slappy a run for his money. Anyways, we're about to be done with this video, but first things first... You'll see that he's actually in the popular section, which is interesting because he's the first character for a while that's been there. And I think it makes sense because he's the son to Mayor Johnson and he's not really a hero or anything. He's just like a, a character on the sidelines, so I will give him credit. It, but it is interesting that we see a character who's actually within the population side and not anywhere else. So Mr. Dr. Uh, Frederick is not alone now when it comes to population. So. Someone was mentioning what is the difference with each one. So my guess is um, the monsters are obviously monster creatures kind of deal. Um, I guess Doctor Shock is or Professor. Oh, and this is the animation here, by the way, with Zam. But then I get I, I get a, a, a mimic spawn right here. So let's deal with him. Okay, now let's go back. There we go. Look at that animation. Isn't that great for new for when it comes to Sam? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, but yeah, my guess is the, and I'm going to open up this land to end it off, but my guess is when it comes to monsters, they're monsters, and I guess Professor Shock is a monster because he acts like one. Uh, heroes are usually kids, but they're basically the um, the, the, the people, protagonists of the, of the stories that R.L. Stein writes that they're our main focus of. Neighbors are characters that are monsters and humans, but they tend to be on a normal, like not a hero side, but they're mostly just eh, if eh, good or not. Eh. They're just living their lives. And then populations are people who are just human beings that are not uh, popular enough to be anything else. But yeah, uh, that's about it. 
I think that's about, yeah, I does, there's nothing else I can say. I think I, I, I talked about what I want to talk about, and I probably didn't miss anything. If I did, then oopsie, I guess I have to dress that up in part three, won't I? But let me know down below, let, uh, all that stuff and more, but... Yeah, we're gonna go off now. Until then, I'm grim and, uh, you know... Something. Thank <laughs> you.